This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Hello and welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program in America that you, the viewer, can use your voice on the child welfare system. I am Dennis Lawrence and beside me is the lovely Maria Milene, our co-host. Maria, what do we have up first for our audience? We have an incredible program for you today. We're going to start by looking at the child uh, welfare system and I think we'll begin, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Once upon a time, there was a young couple who learned that they were unable to have children, so they decided to look into adoption, so they went down to the local Child Protective Services office to begin the foster adoption process. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Hello, I'm Mrs. Jones. We just found out that we are unable to have children. You see, my husband shoots blanks. And her eggs are scrambled. And I so desperately want a child of my own, so we have decided to look into foster to adopt. That was your idea, dear. That is a very good decision. I will get you the paperwork and come to your home study tomorrow. Thank you. Ah uh, yes, only a few more suckers like this and I'll get that federal adoption bonus for sure. Ha 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 ha. Meanwhile, there was a single mother who didn't get her child support payment this week. All we had is bread and water for supper tonight because your father didn't send his child support payment this week. I don't know what we're going to do. It's okay mom, we'll get through somehow. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. What do you want? We got a report that you were not feeding your child. That is neglect. I'm going to have to take her away from you and put her into a foster home. Please don't take my baby away. You should have thought of that before you decided to neglect your child. I will go get a removal order against you. Goodbye. So the worker goes down to the courthouse to talk to the judge. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. What can I do for you? Little Jane is being neglected by her mother. The poor thing is practically starving to death. We need to remove her from her mother's care and put her into a foster home right away. Very well then. Here is your removal order for a little Jane. Thank you. Goodbye. Then the worker goes to get the kid. Hello. I'm a child protective worker. What do you want now? The judge signed the removal order. Little Jane is going to come with me and there is nothing you can do about it. Please don't take my baby. Too bad. You are a terrible mother. Come along, Jane. I will see you in family court tomorrow. So the worker took little Jane to Mrs. Jones. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Do you still want to adopt a child? Yes, I do. Well, this is little Jane. She is a foster kid. I will terminate her mother's rights as soon as possible and then you will be able to adopt her and I will get the federal adoption bonus. Do you mean it? Yes, I promise. You will make a wonderful mother. Goodbye. Thank you. You have just made my dreams come true. The next day, the mother made her first appearance in family court. I call the case of little Jane's mother versus the child protective worker. Hello, I am a child protective worker. Little Jane's mother, you stand accused of neglecting your daughter by being poor and not having any food. How do you plead? Not guilty. Little Jane's father did not send his child support payment this week. It's not my fault. She is lying, she spends all of her money on drugs and stays out all night with a different guy each week. She is a terrible mother. She is lying, your honor. I don't drink or do drugs, I don't have any boyfriends. I am a good mother. I want little Jane back now. 
I think we should terminate her rights. We already had a loving family who wants to adopt her. Give me back my baby. Never. Okay, ladies. Here is my decision. Jane's mother will sign a service plan with Child Protective Services. This service plan will include various tasks that the mother will complete. If she completes the tasks, little Jane will be returned to her custody. If not, her rights will be terminated and Jane will be adopted. We will check on little Jane's mother's progress in six months. Goodbye. Little Jane's mother went home crying. The child protective worker went back to her office furious that everything didn't go her way. That stupid judge. Six months is too long to wait. But that's okay, I had a plan. Hello. Yes, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Little Jane is a delightful child. She just brightens every moment of the day. Houston, we had a problem. What problem? The judge didn't terminate the mother's rights. Instead he gave her six months to get her shit together. But you promised I would be able to adopt little Jane. And you will, but I will need your help. Here's what we're going to do. So the social worker hatched out an evil plan with the adoptive parent, and the next day, she brought the service plan to a little Jane's mother. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. What do you want now? I have brought you your service plan. Great. What do I have to do? You must take drug screenings, psychological evaluations and parenting classes, and you can't get into any trouble whatsoever. That seems like an awful lot. Well, if you ever want to see little Jane again then you'll do it. I will check on you in a few months to see how you're doing. Oh and one more thing. If you screw up, little Jane will be adopted and I will get the federal adoption bonus money. Goodbye. Meanwhile, the foster mother worked on little Jane. Can I go home to my mommy now? No, you can't. Your mother doesn't want you anymore. Yes, she does. She loves me. No, she doesn't. She hates you. But that's okay because you are with me now. And I'm going to take good care of you. Over the next six months, little Jane's mother jumped through every hoop that the child protective worker could throw at her. And then the day of the six-month review finally came. I now call the case of little Jane's mother versus the child protective worker. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. And did little Jane's mother complete her service plan? No, she did not. Yes, I did too. This child protective worker just keep throwing more and more on. That's because we identified more problems as we went along. You did not. You made it all up to try to make it impossible. I did everything that was on that plan. I went to parenting classes, therapy, drug screenings, rehab, got a job, a new home. Now give me my kid back. Now. As you can see, Your Honor, little Jane's mother has a horrible temper. I am satisfied that little Jane's mother has made a sincere effort to do everything asked of her. It is my decision that little Jane be returned to her mother in 30 days. Goodbye. The child protective worker went back to her office and called the foster mother for a meeting. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. So how did the six-month review go? Did the judge terminate the mother's rights? When will I be able to adopt little Jane? The judge ordered me to return little Jane to her mother within 30 days. But you promised that I would be able to adopt little Jane. You will. I had a plan. What plan? All we do is get the mother to screw up. The judge will change his mind and terminate her rights, you will get to adopt little Jane and I will get the federal adoption bonus money. So how do we get her to screw up? That's the beauty of it. We don't. All I have to do is file a false report saying that she screwed up. Well this had better work. If I don't get to adopt Jane, I will expose your little child welfare fraud scheme to the court and you will go to jail. Goodbye. I guess it had better work then. So the worker then filed a false report with the court. Hello. I have some bad news about little Jane's mother. She has much housing by proxy. She will make little Jane sick. This is terrible news. What should we do now? We should terminate her rights so that little Jane can be adopted immediately. Very well. We will have the termination of parental rights hearing next week. Goodbye. So the child protective worker goes to see little Jane's mother. Hello. I have some bad news for you. The judge has changed his mind and decided to terminate your rights. Little Jane won't be coming home after all. She will be adopted and I will get the federal adoption bonus money. Goodbye. No. Then, at the termination of parental rights hearing. I now call the case of Little Jane's mother versus the child protective worker. Little Jane's mother, the child protective worker accuses you of having much chosen by proxy. How do you plead? Not guilty, your honor. That child protective worker is lying. She just wants to adopt little Jane out so that she can get the federal adoption bonus money. That is not true. That woman is a terrible mother. I want little Jane back now. The hearing went on all day. All kinds of people testified on both sides. Then he talked to the foster parents. First the foster mother took the stand. Little Jane is very happy with me. She never wants to see her mother again. I love little Jane, and I take good care of her. She's lying. 
Then the foster father testified. I now call the foster father. Mr. Jones, I have been listening to all of these women hooting and hollering back and forth all morning. Will you please clarify a thing or two for me? Certainly, Your Honor. I am a good Christian man and I used to be a boy scout. I cannot tell a lie. It all started when my wife found out we wouldn't be able to have children. So she cooked up a scheme with the child protective worker that she would be able to adopt little Jane and the child protective worker would be able to get the federal adoption bonus money. Little Jane and her mother are nothing but victims of a child welfare fraud scheme. Then there was a big commotion in the courtroom. The judge had the child protective worker arrested for fraud, and the foster mother ran out of the courthouse and jumped right out in front of an oncoming truck and was killed instantly. Then, when everything had finally settled down, I am ready to make my final decision. Little Jane will be returned to her mother immediately. Thank you, Your Honor. Little Jane's mother went to pick up Little Jane. That's what, Little Jane. Your mommy is going to come and pick you up today. Do you really mean it? Yes, I do. I'll bet that's her now. Oh, Little Jane, I missed you so much. I missed you too, Mommy. Thank you for telling the truth, Mr. Jones. No problem. How about a date? Sure. So Little Jane's mother and the foster father got together and a year later they were married and giving birth to a Little Jane's brother. And they all lived happily ever after. Every week we feature a guest that comes and tells their horror story from the family court system or CPS. If you would like to be a guest on our program and tell your story, please email us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. Once again, that's m-i-p-a-r-e-n-t-a-l-r-i-g-h-t-s at gmail.com. Please include guest in the description. Um, the only way we can make an impact is by bringing these stories to light and showing what is taking place in the system. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this week's guest. It's my pleasure to introduce from Everett, Michigan, Kimberly Braley. Kimberly, it's great to meet you. Um, I understand that you've been through quite an ordeal um, in the last few years. Uh, first of all, can I ask just how old are your children? Well, I still have two minor children at home. One is 13, he's a boy, and then a little girl, eight years old. Okay. And it's my understanding that there's been a whole lot that's happened um, that's changed in your case in the recent year since you actually filmed previously. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, Ever since I've, you know, won my case, um, they're in and out constantly trying to find something wrong. They find nothing wrong. Um, just recently this year, they've decided to um, make all kinds of ridiculous um, accusations, which did not follow through. Um, then to, it led up to October when the workers showed up at my um, husband's house who I do not live with. Um, she was told that the children do not live there. She continued to argue with him. She was asked to leave. She left. She came back within a half hour with another worker and kept on um, being belligerent with him, arguing with him. He asked her to leave again. The next day she came back. She came back with two officers. Um, it's just gotten ridiculous, and the charge that they put up on me was that they opened a case because I was talking about maybe leaving the state of Michigan eventually. Um, you know, that's not in the future plans, it's further down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a county that's opening this case that I don't even live in. Um, 
you know, my husband and I have been separated because they wanted to play the yo-yo game with us. So we just decided to stay separated, live different places. Um, they expect him to walk 60 some miles just to see his children, you know, because he gave me his only running vehicle. You know, it's just gotten horrible. Um, so just, just to clar clarify something, um, it's not Everett that you're dealing with as far as CPS, and it was not your, I just want to clarify, this was not yours and your husband's idea to actually separate and live separately, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so what, can you tell us what the excuse was that they gave you, why you could not live with your husband? They really don't give any, um, you know, any reason. They just say, well, you can't live together if you want to keep the kids. Then they say, oh, now you have to live together to keep the kids. And it just keeps going back and forth. They don't give a reason. You know, they, they just like playing this game with us for some reason. And that, um, a few years ago, they forced us to go back together, which that was fine with me. You know, they sent us to marriage counseling. That turned out great because it wasn't because of us that we were separated. And finally, we've just got tired of being the yo-yo and bouncing back and forth. So we've just decided to continue to live separate. You know, and it, it still hasn't really changed much. They, you know, if they got to harass one, they're harassing the other. And Now, that generally when parents separate or divorce, that is very difficult. Um, on the children, can you tell me what kind of an impact this has made on your children with not being able to live with mom and dad and um, mom and dad still wanting to live as a married couple and be together and the children not being able to um, see both parents every day? How do you feel that's affected the children? Well, with my 13-year-old, um he kind of stays to himself. He doesn't really say much. He, I know he misses, you know, the other parent. Um, now the eight-year-old little girl, she's always questioning me. Why can't I be with daddy? Why can't mommy and daddy be together? When can I see my daddy? Um, why do they make it to where I can't see daddy? Why did they take my daddy away from me? She's a daddy's girl. She loves her daddy. And she's, she's the one that's more full of questions. My 13-year-old, he kind of keeps it bottled up. But I can tell that it bothers him. And he's happy to see his dad. Um, but the 13-year-old, she will actually cry, you know, and want to see her dad. But what can we do when they won't let us go down there to see her dad? And I'm not going to have the man walk 60-some miles. You know, I mean, it's too cold. He's a good dad. So he did what was right and gave you the car so that you would be able to take care of the children, um, be able to bring them to school functions and that type of thing. Yes. Okay. Yep. So it's not like you've been dealing with abuse or anything that would cause CPS to, to question him being in the home as a parent? No. No. He's an excellent husband. He's an excellent father. And that I just wish there was more of them like him. Was there a time when CPS told you that you would lose custody if you, um, I know you said at one point they told you to live together. At another point they told you that you're not allowed to live together. Was there a time that they told you that you would lose custody if you either stayed with your husband or left your husband? Yes. And can you tell me a little bit about that and what excuse they used? Well, when it all first started back in 1990, and well, 94, um, their excuse was because my ex-husband, not the one that is in my life now, um, said that, you know, he didn't like my husband and, you know, these were his kids and blah, blah, blah. Well. That's when they said, well, you'll lose custody of your kids if you don't leave him. Then two or three days later, they'd come back. Oh, well, you can go back together because we found out that, you know, the ex had said, 
oh, well, it was my mistake. You know, it's been back and forth for years, you know, and this last time they're like, well, either you leave and move somewhere else, because if you come to Montgomery County, we're taking your kids. Wow. You know, I mean, they even as much called and inquired about my children, which I have not lived in Montgomery County for over three years, and they made the statement, we don't want the 13-year-old boy because he's too fat and he's not adoptable. We want the girl. And that came straight from a worker's mouth in Montgomery County. We've just got a few more minutes left. Is there anything else that you would like to tell, let the viewers know as far as the horror that you and your family have been through? You know, I just, after 23 years, you know, it's time that they stop. They can't find nothing wrong with the children. The children are taken care of. They're happy. You know, everything that they try to do falls back on CPS. Um, they just need to leave it alone. You know, they've tortured our family enough. They've tortured my children enough. It's time to stop. And that's what I'd like for them to do. You know, my children doesn't need to live in fear no more. They need to be happy children to where they can live a normal life without worry. Right. And, and can you, do you tell me what you have done to get your children help as far as dealing with some of the issues that they've had with Child Protective Services? Well, I seeked out a counselor and that did not work out very well. So what we've done, we've started a plan with the children me and their father, um, we sit down, we discuss things, we let them open up, tell us what they feel. Um, we share ideas of what we can do to kind of make them feel better. Um, we do it all as a family and a group setting. That sounds like a pretty healthy way to help them get through what they're going through. And I just wanted to say I commend you on that. Um, there's parents that don't take the time to do what they need to do and get their children help. And they, as you know, are not under um, the threat of having their children removed. Right. Um, is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like to share with anybody who may be watching? Um, <clears throat> Just stay strong. Um, you know, talk to your children. Uh, like like I do, you know, I I spend a lot of time with my kids. I devote every minute to them. They can share anything with me they want. You know, just stay strong and try to fight these people. You know, it's got to stop. They torture families. They really do. Um, you know, it's the best advice I can really give. Wish I could give better. Well, sometimes it's hard. You know, every situation's unique and every, you know, as you know, we run into other people that are dealing with similar situations, but none of them are exactly the same. Right. Um, so each individual case should be treated individually. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering if there's anything that your children have asked you about as far as what CPS could do better or how they could do things differently. Have the children told them things that that the, the worker is not believing? Is there um, stuff that the children have shared that you could share with people that they feel would improve things? Well, the children don't talk to them. They run and hide. They are very afraid of them. Um, they won't talk to them. They hide. They just refuse to. Um, the eight-year-old has actually went into like a convulsion because she got so scared of them. I had, I had to bring her out of it. Um, the children are also homeschooled because neither one of them can function in the school because of being afraid of CPS. And were they diagnosed 
for like your daughter for the convulsions or? Um, it's part of her autism and it's uh, like a chemical imbalance that causes her body to just kind of go into shaking motions. Um, she also has separation anxiety disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. And that should not be happening in an eight-year-old. No, I, I agree with you 100% there. That should not be happening at all. Um, I want to thank you for coming on the program and sharing your story. I know that can't be easy with everything you've been through. Um, definitely, you know, I, what, what, it, what it appears to me like you're doing for your children is the best that you can do. And we yeah. hope that there's somebody out there watching that can, um, you know, hear what your children have been through and who can, um, you know, at, at the very least, the more people that know this type of thing is going on, the more people that can get involved and bring awareness to it. And I think that's what's going to help us all. So I wanted to thank you for coming on on uh, Silent Voices, and we appreciate your voice. Mm, and thank you for having me. All right, take care. Okay. I'm from Child Protective Services. I want to thank you for watching this week's edition of Silent Voices. You can tune in next week, same time and same channel. If you'd like to be a guest on our program or just give us feedback, please contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. Again, that's M-I-P-A-R-E-N-T-A-L-R-I-G-H-T-S dot com. We also have a social network I'd like you to join, and that is at miparentalrights.ning. Dot com. That's miparentalrights.ning.com. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice, voice can, can make, make a the difference. difference.